Hey everybody, it's Opatani, we're back with more poetry. Today we're going to talk about some third characters from the Dark Souls series. Well, I say about a Dark Souls series, I mean Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3, Demon's Souls, Elden Ring, and Bloodborne. So, because secondly we have Millennia, Millennia, from Elden Ring, and we have the Dolphin Bloodborne, and then we have Shanalot from Dark Souls 2. I just deem the Souls series kind of all, like, they're made by the same, but from software, so I kind of put them all together. It'd be easier instead of having, I guess you say Soulsborne, but then you have Elden Ring now, so what would you call that? So, and then they have Sekiro, Shadow Size Twice, which is also another thing, too, made by them. So, it's just like, I just said a Dark Souls series, because they're all, like, they follow the similar game, game, gameplay mechanics, anyway. And they, they kind of inspire each other, like, you know, with Elden Ring, and they kind of put all the Dark Souls, like, everything from, like, Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3, and Bloodborne, all into, like, one bundle. So, like, a lot of, like, the mechanics from the multiple games. So, that's why I just kind of, like, okay, it's, it's just close to talk about Dark, Dark Souls series. Okay. First, we have Millennia. So, beautiful redhead. Bloom, powerful warrior. Scarlet Valkyrie. So, that's what she's called in the game, or, like, you know, the whole thing with her, she's been infected with the Scarlet Rot, which is, like, basically, like, a very strong poison. It's strong enough to kill gods, because she, like, a lot, a lot of, like, the main bosses in the game are demigods, and, like, it just, the Rot has affected so much. It was basically infected by, like, her when she was born. Like, she's not at the original source of it, if I remember. Like, there's a god, there's basically, like, the outer gods and stuff in Elden Ring that they all have an influence, and they try to make vessels of themselves to take over the land, and one of them, they chose, like, the goddess, uh, the god of rot, which really isn't emphasized what it is, like, infected millennia. So, and basically, it rots you from the inside out. Like, you don't see it in the picture. But she basically, she lost her eyes and she lost like part of her arm and stuff and it had to be like infused with alley, un gold to make it so she would still have limbs. And yeah, and it, like her right arm is gone, like that's just a prosthetic arm right there, so. Which kind of, it, it sucks though, like again, she didn't want that and then she was called like, she has like the blooming flower because she's the vessel of the god of rot. Like, it's called the Scarlet Ania. Like, whenever she bloomed that flower, the Scarlet Rot would spread everywhere. That's why I say, it's like, the blooming is not necessarily, like, as a bad thing, but the, whenever she blooms, when the Scarlet Rot, like, spread it. But, you know, blooming can also, like, meaning, like, she, like, you bloom into something, like, greater. But I just, I like that. I will admit that the Scarlet Ania is very beautiful looking. Even if it technically causes it, it destroys, basically decimates everything around it. But she is, like, she never wanted it, so I deem, like, just more like the blooming of her beauty, not more like the blooming of the, the, the Scarlet Rot killing everything everywhere. So, and then again, because, again, it's called Scarlet Rot, and that's why she was called Scarlet Valkyrie for it. And she looks like a Valkyrie. Like, that's where, at least I do I stick to the design, like, it's like, just like an armored lady, warrior, woman, like, with having, like, the wings. Because when she turns into her, uh, when she... When you face her in the second phase, when you finally face her, you beat her in the first phase. She embraces the Scarlet Rod, she turns into the Goddess of Rod. And she completely gets, like, the big wings and all that, which is really badass looking with the butterflies and all that, with the sword. Like, I don't know, just like, you, you just say, like, a typical female Valkyrie. So, really badass looking. She's a cool character. Kind of feel bad at what happened to her, again, she didn't want it. But me and Mitch rambling, and we had the doll from Bloodborne, which is your, um... You know, she's the one that guides you throughout the game. You go back to the Hunter's Dream, and that's where you go to where they level up, and she'll guide you in a journey. She's also just very gentle and instant towards you. She's based off one of the Hunters. Like, German is the is the main Hunter at the Hunter's Dream. That's basically kind of like the Overseer of the Hunter's Dream. At least until the end of the game, when you actually have to... Like, he's the final boss. Well, he's not the final, final boss. There is a secret final boss, too, but... Uh, basically, he had a, like, one of the hunters he worked with, which was Lady Maria, which, the doll is literally a copy and paste, looks just like her, the only problem is, is, German loved, uh, like, Lady Maria and made the doll in, her, in Lady Maria's image, but she, the doll did not have the personality of, um, of Lady Maria. Like, the personality was just not, like, it's like, instead of being strong, fierce, independent, like, like, warrior woman, like, again, with Lady Maria, uh, the doll was gentle and innocent and submitted to German and was basically just one of the people's names and he didn't like he was pissed off at that because he's like I made it like he was like he wanted to make an image of her because he was just basically like he had a crush and he's like he was, he was basically making a doll so we could do things to it just like oh I love you 
So, and then he found, and when he made the doll, it didn't have the personality, and then he was pissed, and he tossed it to the side and said, you're nothing to me. That's the reason why, when you go to the Hunter's Dream, the doll was like, I don't know, like, why he tossed me this. She didn't really say it directly, but she just basically, he doesn't really, she was saying that she doesn't, he, that German doesn't talk to her, basically. And German completely ignores her resistance, as in because he was basically, like, it was just trash to him. So... And also, when you face Lady Maria in the Hunter's Nightmare in the DLC, like, when you beat Lady Maria and you go back to the doll, she feels like that, oh, like, it feels like a part of me has been freed, like, because, again, she was made in her image, and there had to be, like, some, like, essence, I don't know, like, to make it so that the doll was connected to Lady Maria. Also, the grave that teleports you to the Hunter's Nightmare, which is the DLC, which you face Lady Maria, the doll crouches at, at certain points in the game before the DLC was released, I'm pretty sure, not unless it was after the DLC, but she will, like, she'll put flowers down at the grave that you teleport to the Hunter's Nightmare, and supposedly that grave that you teleport to the Hunter's Nightmare was Lady Maria's grave, because everybody in the Hunter's Nightmare is all dead. You're basically just killing their souls, basically their spirit. Because they were all killed in, all, like, a while ago, and the Hunter's Nightmare was their, basically, their own, like, their hell from them, from causing all the harm they did for killing everybody and the whole, like, beast thing and the healing church. All, oh, the beast outbreak and all that. Like, I'm pretty sure that the, the Hunter's Nightmare was called that because it was basically, like, a hell for all the hunters, that they were just going on an endless hunt in, to the end of days. And the only way they could have been freed, I think, if they were actually, like, killed in the Hunter's Nightmare. But their physical bodies were dead. But their souls were just going in, like, an endless, like, loop. So, until something did something did something about it. And then we have Shanalot, which is also, which is basically the Firekeeper of Dark Souls 2. Well, she's called the Emerald to Roll. She's, again, you, she's, again, just like the doll. She guides you on your journey, the, the going in the right direction, all that stuff. And that's where you go to the level up. So, but yeah, 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 I gotta do that. The doll's uh, poetry. Lady Maria says, Welcome home, good hunter. Gentle innocence. So, and then that's another thing I love with. Welcome home, good hunter. And with Shanalot, the Emerald Herald, Guy Sundead on its journey, was born of dragons. That's what it said. Like, uh, Shanalot, like, she was different from the other firekeepers because I guess she was like a crossbreed of a human and a dragon. So that's why she had, like, she, uh, like, I don't know. I thought that was cool that she's a dragon. You find out at the end of the game that she was like, oh, was born of dragons and contrived by men. Of men. So, like, because she was experimented on basically trying to make, like, a, a being to stop the, uh, the, um, the undead problem. The whole thing with Dark Souls was, like, you have a big bonfire, to, the, the fire keepers tend to it. The undead go into the bonfire to keep the lights on, basically, to keep the fire going. And it's supposed to make everybody happy and all that stuff. It's supposed to be at peace and all that. If people just don't want... They basically, the un, all the undead that you play in in Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, you're basically made to just be kindling for a fire. For all that you go through in those games, it's like, yeah, you just sacrifice, throw yourself into a fire and you're good. Uh, thanks for keeping our lights on. I know there's more to it than that, though, but... Like, it was more like... I guess it supposedly was supposed to get rid of, like... It was, like, prolong the... The undead. I, I don't like to say the word, so because I just this is not really a good word you should see saying. But the undead problem, like I said, it was supposed to stop it, but it didn't stop it. It just prolonged it for a time. So it was an endless again. The thing is, the Dark Souls games, everything is like an endless loop in those games, like an endless cycle. Like the cycles just keep looping over and over again. Like, you feel like that your choices actually matter. In reality, it all ends up being the same exact thing, just a different way. Like, with Elden Ring, oh, you're gonna become the Elden Lord. You're gonna save the day. Like, no, you're just basically, you're gonna be the Elden Lord for a little bit. And then another one falls and takes its place, and then it just keeps on looping and looping. Like, now unless you do something different. Like, there are different endings in the games that kind of add, like, a different possibility something different happening like Elden Ring of the Elgin Stars that you instead of you becoming the Elden Lord you peace that you peace out you just peace out of the lands between and go with Ronnie on a quest across the stars and take the power of the Elden Ring away from people so nobody can influence it to stop the loop so at least I noticed that I was actually nice that they did that that there was like a way that they could stop the the endless loop in those games the endless cycles of like pain and suffering and all that like just completely just stop it but uh, but yeah, and also the music that's playing is the menu music from Dark Souls 2. I love the subtle, the little subtle piece of a piano. 
So, I like Dark Souls 2 again, like, it's my favorite original Dark Souls games. People can spit all the hate they wanted, but that one, that was what defined the series for me. And Dark Souls 1 and 3, I'm just like, they're not bad. I just, like, prefer number 2. And then obviously Bloodborne and Elden Ring are its own thing, and if it had to be, like, which one's the best, Elden Ring and Bloodborne are top. They're both great in their own right, so, I mean, Elden Ring is just a compilation of everything, and they added so much more. So, I still love Bloodborne for this, and then after it would be Dark Souls 2. So, and then that's it for favorites for the Souls games. But, yeah, enough of my uh, rambling. Everybody, thank you so much for watching and listening to my rambling, and thank you for listening to my poems. Hey everybody, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day and a great night. Bye bye. Woohoo.